Today we're going to share how you can import custom regions, territories, or geographies directly into Web Intelligence and use that with your BI data. To do that, we're going to use CMAPS Analytics extension, which we'll come back to in a moment, and we're also going to use CMAPS Analytics Designer to create this map. Now, in some cases, we may already have the map template ready for use right out of the box. In this case, we don't have U.S. Congressional Districts for you yet, so what we can do is create a brand new map. Now what I did was I went out to the U.S. Uh, Congressional website, I downloaded a shapefile containing the districts, and from that shapefile I extracted a list of all of those districts. In this case they'll correspond to the district names that I have in my BI data. Now the idea is that when we create a layer on CMAPS Analytics, I know that it's going to be my custom region, in this case congressional districts. I pulled my shapefile and put it onto a server and just by doing that and clicking save CMAPS Analytics will automatically render that content on top of the map so at least I can see just the basic map view and play around with it. Now what I haven't done is configured the maps visualization properties and I haven't defined the IDs for each one of these location, in this case congressional districts. This is probably the most important part uh, of ensuring that the data that you funnel into your map or custom regions corresponds with the values inside of your report. Now what we've done is we've taken what we call our data keys URL and this is simply a single CSV file and when I open it here in the browser and open it in Excel, you'll see that this is nothing more than a single column containing all of the unique values that represent each congressional district. Now this data comes right alongside our congressional district data that I downloaded off the website. So it only takes a couple minutes to uh, put this together and we certainly cover this on another tutorial that I've posted along with this video. So once we have our data keys and we have our shape URL, the last thing that I want to do is control the visual appearance so that when an end user interacts with the map, uh, they'll get you know, the visual appearance that we desire here. I'm going to go to appearance. I'm going to set the transparency down to 50%. Uh, that way we'll be able to see through the map to the geography underneath. I'm going to go to alerts and in this case we don't have any targets for our congressional districts. So I'm going to use a choropleth to visually represent the high and low values um, or outliers using color. I'm going to leave this as the default for now, um, though we could very easily um, change the color and it will automatically calculate the gradient. Um, and when I click save you're going to notice something important all of my locations have disappeared. The reason for this is that CMAPS Analytics is now looking for data to match up to the keys. The map is now actively looking for data and in our case the data is not going to come from Excel or from hard-coded data it's going to come from web intelligence. Now what we have to do is go to save and export I can go to web intelligence and I can do one of two things. I can actually save this web intelligence project to my desktop so that I can work on it at a later time. Um, I can actually use this template along with Webby if I wanted to drive the Webby map from another server. Or I can go to this nice copy to clipboard icon, press copy, and now we can actually paste this template directly inside of Webby. Now, once inside of Webby, we can go to our CMAPS Analytics view, and what that will do is load up the CMAPS Analytics component. Now, when we go to design mode, you'll notice that the visual appearance of our component changes. And what's happening is the extension is preparing itself and waiting for data. Now, before we bind our data, we want to actually design the map. We want to not just use points 
or clustered points, but we want to import our template. So because we copied and pasted the template to our clipboard, when we paste, now the configuration for that template is living inside of Webby. I can save it, and when I go to Preview Map, in this case, nothing has really changed. Now, if you remember, when we created our template, it didn't have any data in it. It was waiting for data. And so what we need to do is go to the property sheet to bind our data. Now, the property sheet has a handful of properties that are all bound directly to the data in your web intelligence document. The address and lat long corresponds to the locations that we're displaying on the map. And because we used a CSV file that contained all of our all of our locations or keys, I can simply bind by clicking on bind, clicking on the column, and now CMAPS Analytics is going to use the con congressional district ID to display the value on the map. We can quickly test this by going to preview map, and now we can see all of our congressional districts. However, you notice that they're all blue, and when I click on the label, we don't really get anything useful. So when we go back to properties, now I can bind my label, which we'll come back to in a moment. I can bind my value, which can be any measure. And now when we go back to preview map, CMAPS Analytics is going to use the data not only to draw and color, but also the label that we defined here, in this case the key, to display on top of the map. Now, this label is not very useful or meaningful, and so that's really where the power of web intelligence comes to play for a professional report designer. Um, one note, one important note, is in order to commit these changes, you actually need to save the report. Now, this is a step that I obviously forget all the time, even when I'm recording demos, but it's good that I forgot because this is something you want to get used to in using any web intelligence extension point. To commit the changes, you need to actually save the report. Now, if we go to the universe objects, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually create a custom variable, and I can name it whatever I want. It doesn't matter what you call it, but in this case, we'll call it custom label. And what I can do is concatenate together, uh, in my case I'm going to use a little bit of HTML just so it looks pretty, um, where I take the key, I'm going to close that HTML tag, and I can actually concatenate together multiple dimensions and multiple measures to give a more full-bodied view of each congressional district to the end user. So I'm going to take my first metric, we'll call it metric 1 for, for now, and then I'm going to add my first metric measure, and then what I can do is actually just copy this across the board, uh, just to make it simple. So I'm going to add my second metric here, called metric 2, that links to the second metric measure. And we'll copy this one last time to add our third metric. And so what we get here is a custom label that we're going to rebind to our map. Now, one important thing to note is to use values in your map, they unfortunately do have to exist inside of the table. So you can't use hidden columns or anything like that uh, for our web intelligence designer. So I'm going to bring in this extra column, which contains my label. Uh, but in our case, we're going to go back to our map. It's going to automatically refresh and load up our layer name along with our properties. There we go. I'm going to load up my label, and I'm going to bind it to this custom label. So when I save and commit these changes, and we go to reading mode as an end user, what I end up getting is a geographic view of our map along with the custom labels. Now we get our custom map, and when I select the congressional district, I get all of the labels at my disposal. Now, in this case, 
I'm maybe not happy with what I have here. I want to make some quick tweaks to my template. I want to remove the value. I want to change the header. Um, overall, I want a, a slightly different experience. And furthermore, I need a legend. And so that we can do right back inside of CMAPS Designer. I can go back to my template. I can go to the Appearance tab. We can control all of the behaviors of our info window here. We can change the font, the size, the color. In this case, we want to uh, show the layer names, but we want to hide the values because we're, we're controlling the values using the label. So now the info window label will show up correctly. I want to add a legend. So we can go to the map appearance options and we're going to add a legend. And then I also want to add some additional analysis for my end users. Because right now all we're doing is looking at data. What happens if a user wants to search for a specific congressional district? Or what happens if they want to look at the top congressional districts? Well that's where this advanced info window comes into play. We're going to turn this feature on. We're going to turn off a couple of the tabs that we don't really care about. We don't care about street view or multi-select. This isn't a drillable map. Um, and I don't really need drive directions. So let's just leave search, filter, and summary turned on. Instead of my layer, we call this congressional districts. I'm going to go back to save and export. I'm going to copy my template back to my clipboard. We're going to put the map back in design mode. So now we can tweak our design. And it looks like the map now behaves and looks how we want it to. So this info window that we've added into the map provides us with some pretty powerful capabilities for an end user. Um, first of all, as I select my congressional district, it's giving me some very useful information or context that you're not getting um, here in our map view. Um, it's giving us the total, it's giving us the count, and it's giving us the average for the entire layer here. So if we're tracking a measure where we're actually wanting to aggregate, we can actually zoom and pan in. And as I visualize various congressional districts, it's automatically recalculating these values. So now, as I click on a congressional district, it's comparing this value to what's viewable. Now, if I wanted to do it for the entire layer, so in other words, if I want to see how this particular congressional district is comparing to the entire US as opposed to what's just viewable, I can very quickly toggle that. Furthermore, what's really interesting is I can actually take what I'm viewing here, or so what's viewable, and I can actually export this data.